Good morning. Today we are going to see the respiratory system. <coughs> what are the parts of respiratory system? Number one, nose. Number two, nasal cavity. Number three, pharynx. Number four, larynx. Trachea. Right and left bronchi. Right and left lungs. And its covering. That is pleura. Muscles of respiration. It includes diaphragm, intercostal muscles, pectoralis minor. Nose it is made up of two parts, bony part and cartilaginous part. The bony part is made by nasal bone. The cartilaginous part is made by hyaline cartilage. Okay, the nose is lined by mucous membrane. Nasal cavity. It is a space or cavity present between the nose and the pharynx. It has a roof, a floor, medial wall. If I take the medial wall, this is the lateral wall. Once I will repeat. Okay. This is the roof and this is the floor. What you are seeing is the lateral wall. If I close it with my hand, it is a medial wall. So this is the roof of the nasal cavity, this is the floor of the nasal cavity. You can clearly see the medial wall now covering the nasal cavity. If you open the medial wall, you can see the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Here the medial wall is open, cut open. So these are the boundaries of the nasal cavity. So it has a roof, floor, medial wall and a lateral wall. Lateral wall of, sorry, roof, it is formed by Cribly formed plate of ethmoid bone. Flow, it is formed by palatine process of maxilla and horizontal plate of palatine bone. The medial wall is formed by vomer and perpendicular plate of palatine bone. The lateral wall, it consists of three shelf like projections known as concave. Known as concave. There are superior concave, middle concave, and inferior concave. Below each concave, okay, below each concave, there is a space. Below and lateral to each concave, there is a space, this area, okay, known as meatus. There are superior meatus, middle meatus, and inferior meatus. In the middle meatus, there is a round bulge known as bulla ethmoidalis, which is produced by the middle ethmoidal air sinuses. Below the bulla ethmoidalis, there is a semilunar shape, sulcus or groove, known as, okay, that is opening is known as hiatus semilunaris. Hiatus semilunaris. What is the importance of lateral of the nasal cavity? It drains the paranasal air sinuses and nasolacrimal duct. What is paranasal air sinuses? Para, around, nasal, the nasal cavity. Air, that is it is filled with air cells. Okay, sinus, face. So, definition, paranasal air sinuses, they are air filled space. They are air filled space in certain of skull bones. Number two, the paranasal air sinuses are number one, frontal air sinus, number two, ethmoidal air sinus, number three, sphenoidal air sinus, number four, maxillary air sinus. Number one, frontal air sinus, number two, ethmoidal air sinus, Number three, spinoidal air sinus and the maxillary air sinus. Once again, I'll show you. Number one, frontal air sinus. Number two, max okay, ethmoidal air sinus. Number three, spinoidal air sinus. And number four, maxillary air sinus. So these are the air sinuses. Frontal air sinus. It is present in the frontal bone near the medial end of superciliary arch. Medial end of superciliary arch. It drains into middle meatus. Number two, ethmoidal air sinus. 
it is divided into three groups anterior ethmoidal air sinuses middle ethmoidal air sinuses and posterior ethmoidal air sinuses the ethmoidal air sinuses breaks into superior and middle meanders sphenoidal air sinuses they are present in the body of the sphenoid bone it drains into see the arrow mark it drains into the spheno ethmoidal recess this area is a spheno ethmoidal recess maxillary air sinus it is the largest air sinus present in the body of the maxilla that is the upper jaw body of the maxilla it drains into okay hiatus semilunaris that semilunar shaped gap hiatus semilunaris present in the middle meatus the naso lacrimal gap which extends from the orbit okay drains into the nasal cavity okay in the inferior meatus <coughs> applied anatomy infection of sinus results in sinusitis okay. it results in headache and thick purulent secretion or discharge from the nose pharynx what is pharynx it is a funnel shape above it is wider below it is narrow so it is a funnel shape muscular organ which extends from the base of the skull to the lower border of c6 vertebra it is a funnel shaped muscular organ which extends from the base of the skull to the lower border of c6 vertebra or lower border of cricoid cartilage both are at same level okay so superiorly it is related to the base of the skull inferiorly it continues as esophagus anteriorly the pharynx communicates with the nasal cavity oral cavity and larynx posteriorly it is related to the muscles present here that is in front of the vertebra that is para vertebral muscles and the fascia covering it subdivisions of pharynx the pharynx is divided into nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx nasopharynx it extends from the base of the skull to the lower border of soft palate or the lower end of the soft palate okay anteriorly it communicates with the nasal cavity inferiorly it communicates with the oropharynx through pharyngeal isthmus this gap is known as pharyngeal isthmus laterally there is a opening here okay opening for auditory tube so the opening for auditory tube is present in the lateral wall of the pharynx nasopharynx it connects the nasopharynx with the middle ear cavity on the posterior superior part of the nasopharynx posterior superior part of the nasopharynx there is a collection of lymphatic tissue known as pharyngeal tonsil oropharynx oropharynx extends from the lower end of the soft palate to the upper end of the epiglottis this is the epiglottis upper end of the epiglottis anteriorly it communicates with the oral cavity through oropharyngeal isthmus this gap is known as oropharyngeal isthmus inferiorly it communicates with the laryngopharynx near the in the lateral wall in the lateral wall of the oropharynx near its anterior end near the anterior part of the lateral wall there is a collection of lymphatic tissue okay known as palatine tonsil palatine tonsil so it is present in the anterior part of the oropharynx in the lateral wall okay laryngopharynx it extends from the upper end of the epiglottis to the lower border of c6 vertebra or the lower border of cricoid cartilage anteriorly communicates with this is the inlet of larynx so anteriorly communicates with the inlet of the larynx below it continues as esophagus 
So these are the subdivisions of pharynx. Number three, muscles of pharynx. It consists of number one, three constrictor muscles, superior, middle, and inferior constrictor muscles. Number two, stylopharyngeus. Number three, palatopharyngeus. Number four, salpingopharyngeus. These are the muscles. Mucous membrane. The interior of the pharynx is lined by the mucous membrane. You can put it as a histology. Histology. The interior of the larynx is lined by mucous membrane. Okay. It consists of stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. So if you add this one point, you get one more marks in the examinations. Okay. Next one. Blood supply. Okay. Ascending pharyngeal artery and tonsillar branch of facial artery. These are the blood vessels which supplies the pharynx. Venous drainage. Pharyngeal venous plexus drains the vein, venous drainage from the pharynx. Okay. Now supply. You have sensory and motor. Sensory means supplying the mucous membrane of the pharynx. Motor means supplying the muscles of the pharynx. Sensory, it is by glossopharyngeal nerve, that is the ninth cranial nerve, and the vagus nerve, tenth cranial nerve. Motor, that is supplying the muscles of the pharynx. The muscles of the pharynx are supplied by accessory nerve, that is cranial part of accessory nerve, that is the eleventh cranial nerve, except stylopharyngeus muscle, which is supplied by the ninth cranial nerve, that is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Applied anatomy. Difficulty in swallowing known as dysphagia. Okay, when you try to swallow, debilitation is okay, try to swallow, okay, you will have difficulty in swallowing. That condition is known as dysphagia. 